So in the modern era, we're not unaccustomed to seeing color. That's something that doesn't, uh, doesn't shock us at all. But when you think about ancient works, we're used to this uh, noble, classical, stoic, pristine crispness of marble and then the, uh, the luscious green patina of bronze. So, but this, we need to remind ourselves, is very different from how these works once appeared. Uh, so from the dawn of time, from the earliest of human art, we should remind ourselves that uh, art was color. Our first work of art here comes from the Cycladic culture. Uh, so this is actually one of the more ancient works on display in the, throughout the entire museum from around 3000 BC uh, to 2600 BC. The Cycladic culture, so-called, you see the word cycle or circle in that cycladic word. That's from a, a group of islands in the Aegean Sea that uh, are encircling a sacred center in the Aegean. So this is a pre-Greek culture, early Bronze Age culture. And we have these wonderful figurines that uh, are in collections, museum collections around the world. Looking at the figure here, so we see some anatomical details that might suggest that it's a woman, certainly. Standing upright here, what if we were to have her lying down? How would that then affect the way we would interpret her posture? Oh, like a burial, right, as though she's, you know, in the, in, in the big sleep. <laughs> yeah, burial. So absolutely, and this is the context in which we find them, in graves, whether they're meant to be... Uh, sculptures of the decedent, or uh, are they goddess figures? Are they um, priestesses? We just, we don't know. One thing we do know, though, is that uh, while they're invariably found in the stark white marble, they were once painted. And there are a few ways we can figure that out. We can learn that. One technique is to use simply a strong angular light source. We call that raking light, as though it rakes across the surface of the figure. And when we have that raking light effect, that brings out some very subtle differences in the, the depth, the, uh, the contours of the surface. And so one example, this is a different Cycladic figurine, but it shows it under raking lighting. You can just make out some big eyes on the head. So the reason why, through raking lighting, we have that sur we can see that surface is once originally those eyes were covered in paint, and that bit of paint helped protect that region of the marble surface. So as the figure was slowly weathering, just from exposure to moisture, the soil, uh, the elements perhaps of all sorts, the the paint the painted surface was slightly protected so that the surface of the sculpture weathered unevenly. And so that gives it that slight raised relief motif. Not that the sculptors intentionally carved and, and, and wore down the sculpture, rubbed it down such that the eyes were raised, but that this is just a, an accident because that was protected a little bit by the surface of the paint. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, so uh, we can also sometimes use infrared light or other types of uh, uh, luminescence to try to figure out the, what regions were once painted. And there's a tiny label down there, and I've got a picture of it here, showing regions where we have found some trace elements of pigments on our own Cycladic figurines. So little areas where there's some stippling in the drawing showing that once these, pa these parts of it were painted, we don't necessarily always know what colors, although sometimes conservators can, using a microscope, they can look at the trace elements, sometimes even electron microscopes. You might not have any visual evidence, but you can sometimes discern what trace elements remain. And from that, you can reconstruct what minerals were used in the pigment to then determine what colors appeared on that surface. Most pigment from the ancient world was uh, just 
ground up minerals, so different types of minerals. What are some minerals we might use to, uh, to make colored pigments? Cobalt. Yeah, what, what color would cobalt make? Blue. Yeah, yeah, we find some uh, lovely use of, uh, of cobalt to produce blue, particularly over in the, yeah, the eastern Mediterranean and in regions of Asia, absolutely. Any other uh, minerals? Iron. Well, what color is iron? Red. So, well, yeah, iron ochre and uh, uh, basically rust. You know, if you grind up rust in a more pure form, not you don't want to just scrape the rust off of your, uh, you know, your Ford Taurus. But if uh, th th that's that's the color red. This is when iron gets oxidized, it turns red, and so there's naturally occurring deposits of iron uh, that uh, that produce red. We also have uh, malachite, green, and many other colors. <laughs> so, but we're going we're gonna to venture on and uh, we'll talk about some other interesting pigments that we have from the ancient world that uh, aren't necessarily what they seem.